Hi guys, Jeffrey here. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a very honest look into the journey of what it takes to actually reconcile in your relationship. And you know, at this point, we've worked with over a thousand uh, clients and watched their journey from facing complete stonewalling, partner wanting a divorce and being dead set on divorce, and them going on a journey of reconciliation. And the reason why I'm making this video is that a lot of people I think have a wrong expectation of what it really takes to reconcile a broken marriage. And they expect that, let's say, a three-day retreat can help save their marriage. And I wanna tell you why in this video, why that doesn't really make sense. And I want you to stick around to the very end because all five points here, all five stages are gonna be very crucial, especially stage five is something that we haven't talked about before in any of our videos. And I really want you to understand all five stages because all five stages are really, really crucial if you want to go on this journey of reconciliation for your marriage. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or marriages with the right skills and knowledge to be able to design and lead a thriving relationship by yourself. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also click that bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before I begin this video, I also want to let you know that our free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you wanna join that masterclass, be sure to stick around to the very end of this video as well for the announcement on how you can join both those things. So just to level set before we begin this video, this video is gonna be a long video, but again, I want this to be the one-stop shop for you to really understand the process to reconciliation. And a lot of you watching this video might think that this is gonna be a lot of work. It's a lot of self-growth, but you have to ask yourself here, if you're really not willing to go through this work of self-growth and self-development and learning the skills that you need to learn, really you're also saying that you're not really wanting to reconcile. You know, it's almost like how a lot of entrepreneurs, they say they want to have a successful business, they want to become rich, whatever it is, but then when you actually lay out the work in front of them, they go, oh, I don't want that anymore. Well, if you don't want the work, then you're also not wanting the outcome. And so again, this might seem like a lot of work, but again, at the end of the video, you'll see why these are lifelong skills that you will need to learn one way or another. If you ever want a thriving relationship, you will need to learn the skills at some point in your life. And you can try to escape the short-term need to do it, but again, you'll eventually need to learn it eventually. So when I watch a lot of my clients go through their process of reconciliation, the first stage is always when they're simply opening the door for a bit more hope. You have to understand first and foremost why your partner is really dead set on wanting to leave the relationship and wants to get out of Dodge, basically. And we talk about this a lot in our other videos too. It's the catch-22 that she feels. And the catch-22 is brought upon by the lack of safety here. So obviously when your partner wants to get out of the relationship, there's a lot of negative feedback loops that is perpetuating in the relationship. And so there's a lot of reasons why your partner is unhappy. So problems in the relationship exist, but the problem is that without safety again, she cannot express them. And she cannot express them usually because either you don't listen or you don't really recognize that there's a need to change or that the problems exist in the first place. And the problems usually are, she's sure some of it is with your partner, but also some of it is with you as well. And so what happens is that when she expresses these problems, it falls on deaf ears. And worst of all, often it gets pinned back on her, that it's her fault somehow. And so here she's unhappy, but she can't even talk about it. And when she can't talk about it, then there's really no hope of things changing or improving anytime soon. So think about the catch-22 this places your partner in. Because if she expresses it, she loses because either nothing happens or it gets pinned back on her. And if she doesn't express it, then things obviously don't progress as well. So whatever she steps, whatever direction she steps in, she loses. And we have to always remember here that if we want our partner to really stay with us and choose us for the rest of their life, their one and only life, you want them to choose you, that's a really big ask. Right? So you have to back it up with something big as well. You have to make yourself irreplaceable as well. And so if you want to restore hope in your relationship, the first stage you need to do is just to look within, humble yourself and really admit that the mistakes might be with me as well. And there might be a lot of parts where I need to work on. And this is really the first stage that a lot of my clients have to surrender to. They have to accept this fact. And when they, they do, and they really internally accept this fact, it's amazing often how much that changes the relationship pretty much immediately. Because here, finally, you're getting your partner out of the cash 22 she's been in for a very long time. So your partner here will suddenly feel a lot of hope and also becomes a lot more patient in actually waiting for your growth. And again, if your partner is not really waiting, they're not really feeling this hope, understand that this is not something you can fake. You cannot just pay lip service and say, I recognize my mistakes. You have to deliver this with every micro tone, with every micro expression, with every small action that you take. Those small things will really reveal the intention, the true intention. Do you actually understand that the fault also lies with you or are you just paying lip service to just 
make her hear and see whatever she wants to see. And a lot of people hearing this can get quite offended by this. They say, oh, why is it always my fault? Well, if you are offended by a video telling you that the problem may be with you and you need to work on yourself, then it should be no mystery to you why your partner feels this intense catch-22. Because obviously, you're not ready to actually see the flaws within. Now, stage two is when once you accept the flaws within, you also have to start retreating inwards. You want to start to make the genuine internal changes as well. So again, if you're at a point when you are on the brink of a divorce and your partner is really dead set on getting that divorce, your partner is having a limerence from someone else, at this stage, usually what happens is that your partner is pretty much tired of you paying your lip service. She's probably heard of all the promises you make, all the promises for change, uh, you saying that you admit your mistakes and you realize your mistakes. She's probably heard of those things a lot of times, but she hasn't witnessed a lot of the delivery of those promises, of those words that you're saying. So right now, understand that there's really nothing you can say externally to tell her, to tell her about your changes, to convince her of your changes that she hasn't heard. That anything you say will just be regarded as, you know what, this is another time when he's just saying whatever he needs to say to basically get me back. So the last thing your partner needs right now is for you to talk more. The thing that your partner wants to do right now is to retreat inwards and actually see you take the time to actually look within, to do some internal work, even disappear for a bit, to really work on yourself. And one thing that people never realize too is that, you know, if you're in a long-term relationship, you shouldn't be afraid of space. You shouldn't be afraid to disappear a bit because understand that your partner has spent a great deal of her life, of her effort, energy, dreaming about a future with you. So she actually wants you to change. She actually wants to watch you and she will actually wait a lot longer than you think. And I know this is really difficult for a lot of you to hear and to believe, but after working with thousands of clients, after they reconcile, even though their partner is saying, I'm dead set on divorce, whatever it is, deep down their partner really, really still wants to watch you change, really wants the best out of you. And note that, this time when you're retreating and you're disappearing for a bit is not no contact. This is you doing silent work. This is not just disappearing as an escape to actually do the internal work that you need to do. This is you escaping so that you can do the hard internal work. And so the one thing we do in our program is we ask people, hey, disappear for a bit, work on the internal self. But in the meantime, we also have what we call the treating the hemorrhage uh, portion of our program where we teach people, okay, how do we interact and conduct conversations at this point to avoid us sounding a bit aloof, like we don't care, that we're actually doing some internal work, we're not just disappearing to escape the work that we need to do. And in terms of what changes we're actually working on when we're retreating internally here, we're talking about things like untethering, we're talking about things like building a bulletproof vest, building an antithetic mind, building a quiet and observing mind. We're talking about building self-esteem and really identity shifting to become this new self, this new internal self that can thrive under pressure and someone who can lead the relationship a lot better. And this is uh, too big of a concept to discuss in this one video. So I'm going to leave you uh, with a bunch of videos about what untethering means, about what being bulletproof means, about what antithetic thinking means and so on down in the description below. So you, if you want to watch more of those, you can investigate those videos there. Or we also have the masterclass too that you can join where you can really learn the different layers of changes that you need to really make your changes genuine and real for your partner. And some realities that you need to know about this internal work is that this will take a while. Um, usually when we are in a position where our partner really wants to go, and it's not just one problem that plagues that relationship, it's many, many layers of problems. And so when there's many, many layers of problems in a relationship, there's also many, many layers of problems within yourself that you need to really look into as well. So for a lot of my clients, this is realistically a one to three month process when they're just simply sitting back and really just working on themselves within. And again, your partner during this one to three months, if you're doing the treating the hemorrhage uh, portion correctly and you are really changing properly, you'll be amazed at how much your partner is willing to wait and watch your changes along the way. And if you watch all my client stories, you will see that this is the case, case after case after case, regardless of where they started, of how they started, of how dire things are in the beginning. And the standard here is not just good. Your changes cannot just be good. It must be irreplaceable because it must be irreplaceable enough to be drastically better than whatever Limerence partner she's attached to right now or even much better than her saying, I, I would rather be alone. I would rather be by myself than be married. It needs to be very, very irreplaceable. And so don't be very quick to just say, oh yeah, I'm bulletproof, I'm, I'm untethered, right? Again, if your partner is not feeling your changes and she's not drawn to you be, as she sees your changes, 
then that means that your changes are usually not irreplaceable enough. They're not big enough. They're not massive enough. They're not correct enough. And so you can't really fake this. You know, in our program, we enroll surgeons, we enroll politicians, we enroll sometimes celebrities and really successful business leaders. And they come in thinking that they understand what it means to untether, to be bulletproof and so on. But this is the next level of bulletproofness that we're talking about, right? This is something that's irreplaceable. So note that this one to three month process, this requires a lot of patience. This requires a lot of surrendering to the process of growth as well. And that's why the untethering layer of growth needs to come first, if you notice here. Because without untethering, you will not be patient enough. You will not be in the right mindset to be able to really retreat and work inside and work internally for one to three months. You're always going to be wanting to rush things. You're always wanting to manufacture contact when there is really no changes to really show for it at that point in time. And stage number three, once you retreat it inwards, is you have to start learning what we call balanced and principles-based external approaches. So this is when you're trying to start to manufacture contact and start to start conversations and really start to create that safety, create the bottom layers of that relationship that we talk about. So the problem with a lot of people's approaches here when they do eventually want to start contact and start initiating contact again is that one, the growth is not big enough and they're still trying to provide what we call the lower level values. And we talked about this in the previous video that we had. So again, if you want a breakdown of what this low level values mean, you can check out the video underneath in the description below. But again, this whole concept of low level value is that you're still trying to create low level values like doing the chores and providing financially and just the surface level value that really is replaceable and she can get anywhere else. But what we want are the irreplaceable values, the self-actualized values that it will be impossible, almost impossible for her to find by herself or also to find with anyone else as well. And number two is they often rely on what we call the black and white tactics. So, you know, I get a lot of emails and comments from people, for example, with questions like, well, Jeff, do I do a contact or no contact? Well, do I talk to her about this or do I not talk to her about this? To me, these are still very black and white issues. But again, the secret to really understanding what a powerful execution and a powerful conversation looks like, it's not just the black and white, it's in the middle, it's in the gray area. It's not about the what you do, but the how you do it. And so this balanced approach is really when you're exploring this more finessed way of approaching conversations, of approaching tough conversations, et cetera, that allows you to really build the lower layers of the relationship mountain, as we call it. And I also have a saying here that if you have the right how, then you can thrive under any what situations. But if you don't have the right how, you'll struggle under any what situation. So again, the answer is never in the what you do, but really in the how you do it. It's in the middle ground, the gray area, the balanced approach, and the principles-based approach. Now, the third reason why people often struggle at this point is their execution still feels scripted and they're not really tailored due to a lack of mastery of the principles. You know, if I look at a lot of my clients, for example, when they first learn the frameworks of how to conduct conversations, how to start conversations, how to dance in conversations, etc., often they start off by using the scripts that I use. But of course, your relationship needs to take on a different feel, a different personality to how you conduct a conversation. And so as they start to learn the principles of the frameworks a lot better, they move away from learning it through scripts like this and they start to add their own flavor into it, which makes it a lot more genuine, a lot more powerful, a lot more effective, etc. cetera. Um, so this is a milestone that you need to learn as well. And so what happens is if you are suffering from these three pitfalls, your success is really hit or miss. It's inconsistent. And your partner's not gonna believe your changes if your changes are very inconsistent. And the reason why it's so crucial to go through this stage properly is that your partner, again, needs to go from the stage of just seeing your changes to feeling your changes. You know, in our program, within weeks of joining the program, our client's partner starts to say, oh, I see you're changing, but they're not really feeling the changes yet to wanna to come back to the relationship. And so going from your partner from seeing your changes to feeling your changes takes a lot of, mastery. And the problem here is that there's a lot of paradoxes and disguises that comes with this process. So a lot of you, for example, may be in a position where you might have previously thought that what you're doing is actually the correct thing. But what you don't realize is the paradoxical ways that what you think was right is actually destroying the relationship. And a great example of this is what we call the paradox of logic, where you know, you're trying to show your partner your changes, but in trying to show your partner your changes, you're actually showing her that you haven't really changed. And so again, if you want to watch that video, click the link down below this video in the description box below this video. That's a crucial one that people need to understand as well. So here you're really trying to figure out how to bring up topics, how to bring up conversations and dance in conversations that allows you to climb up the five pillars as we talked about 
and avoid the blind spots and the potential hidden pitfalls that you might fall into while you're having these very difficult conversations along the way. And again, the harsh reality of this is that this takes about two to three months for our clients to really master. Because the hard part again here is that there's a lot of subconscious paradoxes that you may not be aware of. And it takes some time to bring those, um, those blind spots into your awareness and begin to shift it, and begin to shift your programming, your approach, and influence that in your microtones, your micro expressions, et cetera, that takes a long time. And again, the standard here is not just good, but you have to become irreplaceable and you cannot fake this. Again, what you do in your microtones, your micro expressions will really show whether you have really changed or not. This again requires that you be patient as you're learning the skills in the backstage, so to speak. This takes a lot of patience, which requires you to untether quite a bit, which is why, again, the internal shift, stage two, needs to come first before you're focusing on how to communicate, how to externally display and manifest your changes here. Now, stage four is when we go through what we call the paradox of change. So once you learn how to communicate with your partner and you do start this communication, your partner's gonna start to resist you a lot. And this resistance is a very natural part of the process because, again, your partner's at the stage where she's very doubtful of her changes. You've made so many promises before and so many good words before. She now needs to see for real, 400%. She needs to be absolutely sure that your changes are indeed real. And the thing is that with changes, it's easy for anyone to change when things are easy, when things are hopeful, when things are certain. But it's really hard for people to change when things are hard, when things are uncertain, when they get curveballs. They want to watch your microtones, your micro expressions, the smallest things you do and say when things are really hard. This is not a conscious thing that your partner does, but she's going to test you and resist you a lot during this time to really see what are you really made of? Are your changes really permanent or are they conditional? Are your changes simply because you want to get her back or because your changes are actually a deep part of you, a deep part of your identity? If, let's say, when she makes it hard on you like this, she resists you and you don't know how to deal with that, then it will really show that your changes aren't really that consistent. They're not really that genuine. They're not really that permanent. Once she comes back to you and your motivation for changing goes away, then you will go back to your old ways as well. You know, so this is a sad plight when people say, I want to change, I want to change. But then when their partner says, I don't have hope for this relationship, they go, oh, okay. I mean, if you don't have hope, then I don't have hope as well. So they give up. And when they give up, they're telling their partner here that their changes weren't that real or permanent anyway. And the consistency and the effectiveness of your actions during this paradox of change period, the high resistance period, will really tell your partner everything she needs to know about you. And if you watch any of my client stories again, you will know that all of them go through this stage. And this is where the rubber really meets the road where you can't really fake your changes anymore. This is when your actual changes will really show for itself. And again, this need for consistency and effectiveness during this time is why going through stages two and three of the development process is really crucial. If you don't go through stages two and three, you're gonna struggle a lot during this paradox of change stage. Now again, the harsh reality about the stage is that it really takes about three to six more months of your partner resisting you and you going through paradox of change before you can really start to reconcile here. This is because your partner really wants to see for real whether your changes are real or not. The funny thing though is that if you have really done stages two and three properly, then it shouldn't really matter how long this process takes because what you do really doesn't really change. You're still going to be making your internal shifts. You're still going to be talking in the same way. So it doesn't matter if it's three or six months, you're gonna go through with it anyway. And if you look at this timeline of three or six months and you say that you can't do it, then it should be no mystery to you why your partner doesn't really believe your changes. Because obviously, if three or six months of displaying your changes is too much for you, then that means that your changes aren't really that permanent. They're not really that long-term anyway. You're not planning on, and you're not able to show your changes for a long-term. Again, this is a zone where you cannot hide your changes. All the work you do in stages two and three is really put on show here. Now, this brings us to the final stage, stage five, which is allowing your partner freedom to surrender to whatever decision she's gonna make. And to understand this, we need to understand that there's two kinds of decisions that we make as human beings. One decision is what we call the decisions without surrender, and the other is decision with surrender. So I want you to take a look at your own life here. I want you to take a look at whatever decisions you make in your life. There are certain decisions that you make that when you make it, you really haven't surrendered to that decision yet. And so whenever you make the decision, you're constantly questioning to yourself, hmm, is the grass greener on the other side? Should I pick another thing? Should I go another path? These are decisions, again, without surrender. You haven't surrendered to the fact that you're going to make the decision, but there's also other decisions that you make, for example, your job, where you have surrendered to it. So you, when you make the decision, you don't spend every single waking moment of your life just doubting your decision, looking for alternatives. 
In fact, you go the other way where you are literally trying to convince yourself and justify why the decision was the correct decision. These are decisions when you have fully surrendered to that decision, where you're not looking elsewhere anymore for alternatives because you've surrendered to the fact that this is the best decision, period. I'm not going to look anywhere else. Now, if you look at the ingredients that you need to surrender to this decision, it's really three criteria here. You need a lot of evidence to support your decision. In your partner's case, if she wants to surrender to a decision to come back to you, then this is where your work in stages one through four will really come in, right? You're giving her a lot of evidence to support the fact that I have changed and you have changed and things will be different than in the past. The second criteria it needs is you need to have explored a lot of alternatives and surrendered to the pros and cons of each alternative. And the best example I can give here is really, you know, if you, let's say, have tried one flavor of ice cream and that flavor, let's say, is chocolate. Sure, chocolate can be good. But if you haven't tried and explored all the other flavors, then you're always going to be wondering, okay, chocolate is good, but what about this? What about that? And you might be able to apply this to even your job or meeting your partner or any other decisions that you have that if you haven't explored the alternatives, you're always going to be wondering, what if, what if, what if, what if? Even though the decision you made right now is a good decision, it's something you're happy with, you're content with, you're always going to be asking what if. And so you can't really fully surrender to the decision if you haven't explored the alternatives yet. And so here, not only have you explored the alternatives, but you also have accepted the pros and cons of these alternatives as well. These are the three criteria you need. And if you have these three criteria, you have all you need to really emotionally surrender to whatever decision that you need to make. And so how do we actually allow your partner freedom to actually surrender to a decision? So the first focus you need to focus on is really, again, making sure that stages one through four has become your lifestyle and you're becoming an irreplaceable asset that you're not really faking, that you're becoming this person. You're not just appearing, you're becoming. The second thing is, I want you to be able to use your internal shifts, you know, the untetheredness that you feel, the self-esteem that you feel, the confidence that you feel, the conviction in your own internal changes to really start to empower her to explore. If let's say she's in limerence, I want you to actually let her explore other partners. And this might sound controversial to a lot of people, but again, this needs to happen. Because if you're not willing to allow your partner to explored her alternatives, you're basically asking her to be unhuman. You're basically asking her to be like a robot where she's supposed to get her feelings aside and just choose you because you told her to. And if your changes are actually that real, and if your changes are actually that genuine, that irreplaceable, then after exploration, she's eventually going to choose you again. And this is such a crucial stage to go through again because reconciliation means nothing without surrender. Again, if you do not allow your partner to surrender first to a decision and explore alternatives, when she comes back to you, it's not out of want, but out of need. And you're always going to be keeping one eye open because she's never going to be fully surrendering to her decision here. Again, asking your partner to choose you for life is a big ask. Allow her the freedom to be able to surrender to the decision of choosing you for life. And this stage is really the pairs of change stage on steroids. And it's going to be impossible to do without the internal layers that you've made. And a lot of people, guys, a lot of people can never go through this stage because they haven't untethered yet. They haven't built their own self-esteem yet. They haven't built the inner layers that's needed to be strong and to be patient while your partner is exploring other avenues. But if you have the right changes, like a lot of my clients do, as your partner is exploring, you're going to see her like a human. And you're going to say, you know what? I understand I have compassion for what it takes to actually surrender to a decision because I need those things to surrender to my decision as well. And you're going to have the confidence and the conviction to say, you know what? At the end of the day, if I make myself irreplaceable, I will eventually win out in some way or another. Now, the reality again is that this, depending on how much you've damaged your relationship, can be a one to 12 month process, realistically. Again, your partner really needs to understand how to emotionally surrender to the decision of coming back to you. And you have to allow her that opportunity to be able to surrender to that decision. And if you can't go through this, then understand that you're not in a position for your partner to come back to you. Because what you're looking for again is to control and to manipulate your partner into coming back, right? You are expecting your partner is a robot here who is supposed to ignore her feelings and who, who is supposed to ignore the fundamental human need to be able to surrender to a decision because you said so. And so the inability to go through this is really why you may be struggling in your relationship in the first place is why your partner is feeling a bit stuck in the relationship right now. And so the funny thing again is to wrap up is that going through these five stages again might seem like a lot of work, but through this, you're actually learning all the skills you need, the internal skills and also the external skills that you need to be able to create what we call an interdependent relationship where both you and your partner are coming from this relationship from a place of want 
You're not coming together because you need each other, but because you want to. Because of all the alternatives that you can explore, these are the people that you choose. And if you don't want to go through the stages where you simply want your partner to be controlled into coming back to you and being in a relationship with you, then you're not looking for a relationship with a human. You're looking for a relationship with a robot. And you're not really looking for an interdependent relationship. You're either looking for an independent or dependent relationship. And that's not a very healthy relationship. So understand that these mental hurdles and these skills that you need to learn are skills you need to learn anyway if you ever want to create a thriving relationship now or in the future. So again, this is why I say you cannot really escape this work. This is the work that you have to do one way, one time, or another. So I know that was a longer video, guys, but I hope that really shows you kind of the path and what it really takes, the internal shift and the external shifts it takes to really reconcile in your relationship, regardless of whether you're facing divorce or facing your partner having limbers or someone else, whatever it is. And if you want to learn deeper into what this process look like, the different layers of changes you need, and a system that walks you through these stages, then I want you to join me in my free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In that masterclass, I'll show you the exact process all my clients have used to really get them from stage one all the way to stage five and reconciliation ultimately. So again, if you wanna join that masterclass, click the link above my head or also down below this video. And if you wanna download a guide where I discuss with you some of the external shifts and the external frameworks that you can use to guide conversations better, you can also download the guide I have for you above my hand also down below this video. And finally, if you want to join a community where we can discuss some of these nuances here with a member of my team, you can also do so by uh, joining my free Facebook group down below this video. And finally, if you found this video helpful, just give it a like. It really helps channel out and spread this to more people. And if you have a comment, go down below, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you as well. In the meantime, I will leave you with these two other videos with more knowledge and more skills to design a thriving relationship for yourself. For now, I will see you in the next video.